Let's talk about Honkai Star Rail. I think that a lot of individuals, at least as of right now, are entering into that mid to late game stage, or maybe you're already in that sort of end game stage, you know, Trailblaze level 60 plus or 65. At least that's where I'm at currently. As a result, I think it's important to discuss why I think a vast majority of individuals maybe shouldn't pay attention to either tier lists or build guides. I do want to clarify, however, they are relatively speaking good enough to know, but not good enough to follow objectively. Something I think a lot of people mess up with or can get into the trap of is always following the tier list that you see. This could be either your favorite content creator or somebody random or anybody else who maybe is a theory crafter in the community. What it could be, as an example, is saying Zila is S tier now or Silver Wolf is S tier now, but later on their value could drop off. And at that point, you may be looking at your account like, why did I pull these units? I'm not saying that will happen. What I am saying though is that an example of something that could happen. If you follow tier lists too religiously, you could hyper invest into a unit that you may not use down the line or may only be using for right now until you get somebody who replaces them. As an example, two tier lists could play somebody like Himiko completely different areas. One could say she's F tier, she's bad, don't build her. Another could say she's S tier, you need to build her. And depending on which way you go, you could either be missing out on a unit who you potentially could enjoy the playstyle of, maybe don't deal as much damage as you would hope, or build a unit who you think is going to be great but you don't actually like or find all that impressive. But this is especially true when gotchas involved. This could be true for Jing Yuan, this could be true for Silver Wolf, this could be true for Zila. As long as you have to pull for a character and you are relying on a tier list to evaluate that character, there could be a chance that that individual unit is not as good as you thought or maybe more dependent on their light cone and supports than you wanted. And so I want to clarify, with every character there's a situation where they're great at or a situation where they're bad in. Zila can be wonderful as a unit overall for damage, but in the event that it's a boss at single target, she may not get what you expect out of her simply because she doesn't have the ability to proc resurgence if that boss doesn't summon mobs. If she doesn't have the ability to kill lighter mobs and get an additional turn, she may be dealing less damage than you would expect and as such she's not a boss killer like somebody like Yan Xin could be for you. It's also an evaluation of what you have as support for each unit. Somebody like like QQ or somebody like Himiko can be great for your account depending on what you have available to offer them. Whereas somebody like Jing Yuan could be wonderful with his light cone and with set supports, but if you don't have any of those, he may be pretty bad. I don't want anyone to think that tier lists are the be all end all of your entire career in this game. And I don't want individuals to get caught into the hype of pulling for a unit because they're amazing, especially for Eidolons. If everybody says E2 Silver Wolf is great, I don't want anyone to pull for E2 Silver Wolf and then be like, eh, what did they do? I think as of right now, we're in the early stages of the game. As much as people can be in the late game with 60 or 65 level accounts, we are still in the early stages. We have had three limited units, Zila, Jing Yuan, and Silver Wolf. Every unit that comes out right now is going to be regarded as great because there aren't many units who can realistically compete with them. Some are limited. If these units are limited, they're bound to have better stats, at least overall or from some perspective, than a standard banner character. The same goes for light cones. Lotra is going to be great, but realistically speaking, if a lot of you have a Bailu, are you going to pull for him? And at that point, is he an amazing unit because he's just strictly good or is he amazing because he fulfills one role that you really can't do otherwise with? You can't use another unit to slot in in his stead unless you have a Bailu and Natasha or unless you have a Jepard. You need either that survivability that he offers you or defensive utility and if you don't have either one of those, he's kind of going to be an amazing unit in your eyes because you had no other options. But that's enough about tier lists. Let's move on over to build crafting because I think that's less nuanced than, you know, tier lists as a whole. But I also think the issue with build crafting and the issue with builds as a whole, it's if you follow them religiously, let's say hypothetically, you don't even check out a character's kit, you just do what you see in the guide. First off, you won't understand a character's kit in the slightest, but second off, you won't know why you're building them for what you're building them for, and you won't understand what certain stats means, like effect hit rate. And at that point, I think the biggest issue is so many individuals will religiously follow one build guide without realizing, okay, or even looking at their actual situation and saying, okay, what's best for me? Maybe you're like me. And you're farming Zila set so often, Quantum, because you need Quantum for Zila, you want Quantum for QQ, you want Quantum for Silver Wolf. And you're getting the guards at the drop so often that your options are either A, just slot it in to salvage for a different set, or B, if it has really good stats, you're wondering who can I use it on. At that point, you may be inclined to slot that on over. Yes, you may want to farm Musketeers because it's great, or Space Healing Station, but something like Inert South Soto may balance out your crit stats more. And at that point, you may want to farm that instead. Or maybe you're wanting to give the guard set to your unit to keep dying, like Ting Yun. I want individuals to get into the habit of really determining their own builds themselves. Even if it's not meta, even if it's not the best build, it may be a 
a build that works really well for you, given how you want to play, given what you find issues with, and given how you legitimately want to build out a character. If you adore a unit and you want to build them as a DPS, go ahead. Every Genshin player can tell you they have that one unit who's really not built the best, but you think it looks nice. Even Arknights players will have that one unit who's not really the best or the strongest, but like, yeah, but they're cute though, or yeah, but I like them. Being the best and having the most optimal build isn't always going to be the best thing for you personally. If you want to make Silverwolf into a DPS, go ahead. Yes, her functionality may drop a little bit. And yes, you may not be getting the same numbers as your friends, but realistically, if you get more value out of that build, go for it. If you're looking at Relic Session, you're like, I don't really want Space Healing Station. Farm something else. Farm what you legitimately would like. Because at the end of the day, this may be a gacha game. This may be about resource management, but this is still your account. And if you are are not happy with your place in the meta with your account standing with who you're using because you're only following the meta and the best advice given to you you're gonna drop it and be unhappy especially if this is your first gotcha game and you don't know about that dude this is gonna ruin your experience long term so find a character you enjoy find a build you enjoy maybe it's not necessarily building out a character for the wrong reasons and making them into a dps maybe it could be saying hey i have this extra set let me throw the wind set onto some random character or let me throw this additional quantum set onto somebody else maybe you're going musketeers on everybody because you really don't feel like farming any specific artifact set or relic set that's perfectly fine so in general my advice for any character and anything as a whole ignore tier lists don't ignore them to a point where you disregard them but Acknowledge them to some degree if you're just starting out. Don't, however, expect them to be able to tell you how to build your team exactly as they should be and how to clear the hardest constant in the game. A tier list is just made to roughly evaluate the strength of a unit in comparison to everybody else in a specific niche. AoE versus single target, for example. So maybe keep them in mind once you're starting out, but once you get to mid and late game, start forming your own opinions as to who's really working out for you. Are you skill point negative? Are you skill point positive? What's the situation for you? Then start building out your characters. Don't necessarily just build out the strongest ones because DPS doesn't mean you can clear all the content if you can't survive the content. Instead, legitimately look at your relics and understand that, hey, these may not have the best substats, but instead of farming for a perfect set, getting a basic set now and getting your other characters to a decent standing to a point where they can assist you in clearing enough content to where you can actually move forward. Having the strongest and best built Zila isn't nearly as good as having a good team for Zila. In regards to relics, don't necessarily throw them all away. 10 relics for one chance at a possibly good relic isn't good enough. It'd be fine if you could focus that main stat, but in Genshin, it's three for one. Even if it's not a potential singular piece, it's three for one in any piece, any slot. So instead, look at the relics you're throwing away and understand, hey, can these really be good? If they have crit rate and crit damage, maybe keep them and just slot them onto somebody else. My Asta is built because of the amount of extra relics I have. My Ting Yun is using the guard set because she almost always dies anyway, and the guard set has a bunch of crits somehow. These may not be optimal builds, but these may be the builds that are most accessible to you, and if you can get more value from your stamina spent, then that's more worthwhile for you at this moment. We are not in endgame yet. We are reaching endgame, but we are not nearly in the point where anyone can say, yeah, my account's complete. So instead, focus on you, focus on your account, focus on what makes you happy, and maybe look around, talk with your friends who play this game, talk with the community in general, and just find an opinion and something you can agree on. Experimentation is important. That's kind of just the gist of this general video. With that being said, if you enjoyed, leave a like down below. Consider joining the Discord server. It will be linked in the description as well as the pinned comment. And consider following me on other social medias. I will see you next time.